Good day and welcome. We are at the Fortopolis International Racing Course, a Group 4 Manufacturers Cup. Don't even know what round it is, round 3 or something like that. So we're starting 8th. This was the first race of the night. And I was not sure how it was going to go. Like, it's kind of predictable. This track is so tyre heavy, or, or so reliant on good tyre wear to do well round. The Ferrari, the, you know, the car of my choice for Manufacturers Cup, is not great on tyres. And because this track is also kind of reliant on a good handling car, it also doesn't go that well with, with the Ferrari. So I'm kind of down on two counts. The Ferrari's decent at handling. It does like short, sharp corners with lots of direction change. And this track has it in a few places. But a lot of your passing zones come off very long left or right hand corners and that's where the Ferrari suffers at. It has to hold a consistent line, it cannot accelerate out earlier, it just builds up understeer the long gear holder corner. So it makes it very tricky to go and attack other drivers around here and this track is hard enough to pass as it is without having a car that does not want to, you know, go and attack at the places where you can actually make an overtake. So I was sitting in for a long race. I, I knew it was not going to bother the top four or five. Well, the top four. Looking at the, the grid lineup, we had Conzio ahead of me, uh, Carbass in the Subaru, and Dino's in the BMW. Now, I was not sure how their tyres were going to last, so I, I knew Conzio, I'd seen him in, in practice this week, that his front tyres were wearing pretty hard on the long run, so my goal going into this was to, to maybe get the top five, you know, maybe hit that, and to get there by looking after my tyres early, braking earlier, just easing into the corners, saving the tyres, but remaining in touch with the cars ahead just driving kind of passively early on for the first four laps and then as their tyres drop off I can start to make moves forward. That was the plan. The nice thing about the Ferrari is that the tyres do wear quite evenly so if I was pushing the car the front and rears wear at about the same rate. The front's a little bit worse so it does build up some understeer but it's not it's not killer but the car already understeers as it is so it doesn't really help things as you can imagine. So saving some tyres early on to then attack later was the plan at this stage. So we're going to jump forward to lap 4. We're riding on board with Makosi and this was probably the first major piece of action for the guys in the lead. He gets a good draft on Adam. Adam goes defensive into the first corner. Goes a little bit deep or just manages to pull it up but just sort of eases through the apex. Makosi holds back, hits the apex sweetly gets a good drive out and overtakes Adam. So that was actually a really nice piece of driving by Bacosi. Forced Adam defensive. Adam, I guess, got a little bit sideways going into that corner. So he got a bit crossed up. As he hit the apex, he couldn't pull the car up on it. And so his car went wide and Bacosi, I guess, saw that coming and managed to sort of do the over and under and come out in the lead. And Sidog too. So I'll just jump back and see how Sidog got past Adam. So now riding on board with Side Dog. I guess after Adam got compromised, Sai was right up behind Adam. Going into what are we, turn two, turn three. Gets a nice run around the outside. He's just there, so Adam can't cut him off. Goes and dives onto the inside. And by that stage, it's too late. Adam couldn't turn in. He'll just turn in on Sai. And so a nice piece of driving by Sai. Good opportunistic move. Taking advantage of Adam being compromised because of his and Makosi's battle. And he picks up second place, so nicely done. As for me, on the other hand, into the middle of lap six. So Huzo, who did actually a blistering qualifying lap and put himself third on the grid, which was really, really impressive, has ended up holding everybody up from fifth backwards. So we're all kind of in a battle to try to overtake Huzo, or who can do it first. John, I was a bit afraid of who's behind me in the Renault, because I figured with the downforce that car has, he'll be better on his front tyres, so he'll still be a threat at the end of the race. He should have better tyre wear than me. I see Conzo go wide here, but I'm still not quite in position to overtake. 
and Adam's made a mistake up ahead and has fallen back and now this creates a bit of a gaggle as soon as one car got past him everybody else lines up to get past he goes side by side with Conzio through here I look to take advantage of either one of these guys he pushes Conzio a little bit wider go follow Conzio for the right hander which means Adam is left hung out to dry and also prevented John from going over the inside of me Adam goes side by side with me through the left hander but cuts too much of that corner off and gets a half second penalty for his efforts so not only has he fallen back four or five places with his mistake he also picks up a half second penalty which I was in prime position to take advantage of he goes to have a look at Conzio that forward is so fast in a straight line and John don't know what John was thinking he completely missed his breaking point or he hit his normal breaking point and hit me in which case I hit Adam and I was just a passenger at that point I broke a bit earlier because we would all been in a draft battle down that straight and there was three cars stacked up very closely so you can't take your normal braking point at that, at that stage you're just going to hit another car I guess John either misjudged that or mistook that or forgot about that and ran into the back of me but we'll go back and have a look just to make sure I'm on the right path of thinking So just on board with John now, as you see, he gets a good run following me through here. That's where his car is uh, at its best, really, through the long corners. It's got bit, much better downforce, or much better downforce balance, but it does suffer in a straight line. So you see me pulling away from him, just ahead. And I guess he breaks at the orange point up here. It's just way too late. Like that's, that's his normal braking point, but I guess he wasn't thinking of there's three cars all going into this braking zone together I should brake earlier I can, I can only assume that's, that's what he was thinking so it wasn't you know deliberate attempt to knock people off the track but it was just a, a, a bit of a mistake by him and probably one he should look back and actually not not just him but but just one to think of if, if you're behind a battle of cars or a couple of cars and they're battling or they've just been in a, in a big draft down a straight they're going to be braking earlier they're going to be you know somebody's going to brake earlier the lead car may brake at their normal braking point the second car probably can't do that they've got more speed they're in the draft they don't have the downforce so they probably can't afford to brake so they're going to brake earlier so you as the third or fourth guy on the train just got to realize that these drivers are going to be braking earlier I'm not in a position to pass or overtake or battle into the corner so I just have to break a bit earlier so we get through this corner and you should be thinking about the corner exit and setting your car up for a good drive out of the corner and potentially overtake somebody down the next straight rather than trying to force your car into position which isn't really there at the time see so not not so much aimed at John but like everybody in particular it's my thoughts going in as you see my mistake and I took out sticks I didn't really take out sticks I think he also spun off at the same time so my rambling went on way too long but that was the next piece of action oh spoilers uh, but that's just that's my thoughts like if I see a couple of cars battling up ahead I'm going to ease off or go light on the brakes a bit earlier before I get to that point so I'm not going to knock somebody off the track you've just got to give people a bit of racing room, a, a bit of respect, because you don't you don't know what's going to happen, and, and you should set up for the next straight and try to take advantage of anything that goes wrong in the corner. So we'll jump back to me, lap seven. So at this point, I feel I've got better tyres than Conzo. I see, keep seeing Conzo do, you know, missing apexes, understeering a bit, and if I could get my car in a decent enough position, then I should be able to get a good draft and, and overtake him down the straight just with how much he's understeering you see I'm closing right up I give him a bit of a tap didn't mean to but he was quite a bit slower through that corner than I thought and with fifth fourth and third just up ahead it was so tantalizingly close I try to get a good drive out of here you see me understeer I hit the grass and it just spits me and I go around and I think that was Stig's TC that also went off with me in tandem a lovely tandem spin really sort of gutted about that too because 
it's a tough race. This race is a tough race for, for any car that doesn't hold onto its tyres, so... I, I've raced the Ferrari here before, I know how tough it is to get to the end on one set of tyres. And that's the only competitive strategy here for this combo as well, so... Even though I hadn't really moved up any places, I was 7th because Adam had fallen behind and you saw the incident before. I was still pretty happy with my position and being able to hold it against what I thought were possibly faster cars, you know, John behind me, cars with better tyre wear and better tyre life, which is more important than outright single lap pace, which the Ferrari kind of has, kind of has. It could get me up there with qualifying. So I was pretty happy at that point, but it was my own mistake. I, I was just trying to get in a position to attack Conzio. I put my foot down over that left hand or through that left hander and I hit that bump which which is kind of a normal line but as soon as I landed I could feel it through the steering wheel it was under steering and I knew it was going wide I did lift off I think I lifted off a little bit but it wasn't enough the rear tire hit the grass and as soon as it hit the grass it pitched me to the left and you saw the result so a real shame to end up that way but then some chaos happens always last lap bit of fun these two go wide, I think Nick goes too wide into the gravel, and so does Stiggs, I guess they both had dirty tyres after the incident, as you saw on the straight. So, right behind Stiggs, who also spun off with me, I kind of attack him up here. <laughs> as you see, the grass is very slippery, it almost spun me around again. So I pull back in, I try to get a good run on him up here, but you see me counter steering, the tyres are getting worn, I'm pushing the car a lot just to get round him. I have a look up the inside, I can't just push him out of the way, he does take a nice defensive line. I take a bit wider to get a good drive out of here, he does slide a bit, still fighting the car, but he does manage to hold on to 11th and I come home in 12th. Just the incident I had again, but this time on board with Stiggs who also spins out. So you see me run a bit wide, you see it hop and understeer, and I just get loose. And I think Stiggs was a bit too wide there as well. Maybe he was trying to avoid me, go around the outside. He gets his left rear tire on the grass just at the end of the curb, so maybe you misjudged that. But he also spun off tandem with me, which was kind of beautiful. Kind of beautiful. So that was it for my race really really tough don't know what to say about it really tough I, I do like the track it's a really challenging track but I think every time we've been here it's been a battle of tire wear the track is reliant on on grip to get good lap times and it does burn the tires out pretty hard so it's a tough track because of that but I think just about every time I've been here for the FIA events it's been about stretching those tires out I think we had one race where it wasn't but most of the races stretching the tire out so it does become a bit of a train and a bit of precision it's difficult enough to overtake you know on the best of days but let alone you put a bunch of wearing tires into play and it kind of goes nowhere i thought there might be more to it conzio's tires certainly were wearing a lot more than mine at the end of it but he could still hold on to his position quite comfortably and there wasn't a lot I could do about it, so it was a line. I think the only the only drivers that really made any headway was Bass. Car Bass moved up, I think, from sixth or fifth, picked up third in the end in the Subaru. So it was a good effort by him to get past the driver. I think he's going past one through that corner. Get, got past Dino's there, and obviously Macos in Sidog early on, and I, I, I showed you their battle because wasn't that much action happening on the track so I spent what I spent seven laps in eighth place just following the train around it, it was really tense in the time and, and you're trying not to make mistakes you're trying to make the tires last as long as you can but really tough racing and, and at the end of it most of the cars end up in the same position so it's kind of not that exciting but it's really tense in the moment it's hard to describe. You have to, you have to follow me on Twitch. You have to watch it live because you probably get the feeling then, not when I cut it up like this and you just see snippets. 
and unless I make mistakes, which are like this, which are not great, not great. But still, had a blast. Did the second race. The second race was much the same. It was it was just a train. I qualified sixth, and I finished sixth. So I had a better result. Obviously, much better than I think twelfth. I ended up here or thirteenth or whatever. So yeah, twelfth. I said it before. So much better result, but with a lot less action. It was I guess everybody had had a race under the belts. They did it again. I qualified sixth. I was really happy with my qualifying. I think a fifty-two point four. There was more in it, but even if I'd nailed the first sector, which I was down on, I wouldn't have improved my position from sixth. So once again, I played the long game, tried to hold on to my tyres, and I could stick close to the guy ahead. I can't remember who it was in the second race. I was sticking close to, to the driver ahead. It was Dino's and Conzi was around me, but I can't remember who was right ahead of me. But still, I could not overtake. The Ferrari just was weak in the corners just before the straights where you can overtake and I could gain on them down the straights that was 6TC actually in the Porsche and I gained on them down the straights but I couldn't quite get the overtake done because it wasn't close enough out of the important corners and the Ferrari was really weak through the important corners so I never got in a solid position to overtake so yeah real shame real shame it's quite good because they had good pace and, and well good pace a much better pace for the Ferrari than I've had here in the past and I was quite enjoying the race so overall quite fun but not really action packed but that's okay you can't have it every time but I hope you did enjoy what you saw what you've just watched if you did hit the like and subscribe button share the video with your friends and family if you want to see the races live get that really tense feeling the nail biting on the edge of your seat or whatever you're sitting on at the time then follow me on Twitch. The link is in the description below. Until next time, thank you very much for coming along and watching, and I hope you have a good one.